Hey guys, welcome back to the tavern. Thanks for dropping in. Today we are going to be doing uh, a little bit of a targets and fades round by round in underdog best ball drafts. I have been doing a million underdog drafts. Hopefully we uh, we take down a couple of big tournaments this year, have some pretty good caches. Uh, but we've been diving in pretty steadily. I don't think I've been doing less than 10 or 15 drafts uh, pretty much constantly. But I like to do them in waves, get a really nice feel. Uh, for 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 pockets of ADP. Um, but anyways, what I want to do is two targets and two fades per round to give you a little bit of coverage. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit one sided to say, hey, in round one, my favorites are Christian McCaffrey and CD Lamb. So I'm going to try to take into account that in order for this to be the most beneficial um, to you folks, I want to try to pick guys at different ends uh, or at least not super close together round by round so that depending on where you're you're picking uh, where your pick order is uh you still have a little bit of good information uh to to go on so i couldn't find a draft board by adp in the underdog background and format since obviously their adp changes literally every day that uh it doesn't seem to make sense so i'm going to contact the underdog guys see if we can't get something going for that but in the meantime uh i have the underdog ADP for best ball updated as of July 24th. So yesterday, as I'm recording this uh, to give you a better visual. And uh, so without further ado, let's get started. So in round one, um, my favorite target, and this is actually going to be a little bit of split because depending on who you like or don't like, they really tend to go almost back to back. It's going to be Bijan and Brees Hall. Uh, I think consensus says Bijan typically goes before Brees. They're pretty much back to back in my rankings. I think both of them have the ability to have a just legendary upside season, more than 20 points per game, and do some some pretty exciting stuff. The big reason that I like them is targets in round one. I'm not necessarily reaching for them. I'm just really happy, and I'm definitely not going to let them fall past ADP when I get a chance. Uh, main reason here is I want to draft this particular year. I want to go hero RB as often as I possibly can. Uh, and even from there, I might be okay going with a slightly fragile RB build. I don't know if I'm going to go hyper fragile, but I do like the idea of I, I want to stop at five running backs. And depending on where I go, I could potentially stop at four, uh, depending on how things work out. And starting with a Bijan or a Brees Hall is the absolute best way for me to start a hero RB build uh, where I can wait a considerable amount of time for when I start taking running backs. I'm never boxed in, and I'm also not going to feel the need to draft many of them, which is going to allow me at least one or two extra dart throws at the wide receiver position. And because this rookie class is so deep, I think there are uh, just there's there's more targets later, particularly at wide receiver that I don't mind. Um, and it also opens up the ability for, you know, if I like a lot of late quarterbacks this year, uh, I do like some of the high end tight ends. But if that build doesn't come together, uh, there's a good chance I'm going to need an extra roster spot or two because I might go three quarterback and I might go three tight end in a hero RB build where I can draft at least one less RB, four or five of them. Uh, that's going to allow that a, a little more plausibility at, at the very end. Um, so really, really liking them for that particular reason, you know, and again, I also think in the half PPR format, I know where the big tournament winning lineups, you know, usually nail a lot of wide receivers and we're still going to do a lot of that. But for me, when it comes to who's going to put up the most, you know, pure points. And if you, you know, add it up in totality, I still think Bijan and Brees are, they're going to outscore several of the wide receivers that are actually going in front of them. I think both of them are going to outscore guys like Amon Ross St. Brown and uh, Jim, you know, Jamar Chase. Um, Justin Jefferson, we, we we like him a little bit too. We're going to talk about him here in just a second. But you know, from a pure points per game standpoint, hard to beat it. Love the Hero, uh, Hero RB build this year. Uh, favorite two is going to be a faller. He was going as the 101 last year. It's going to be Justin Jefferson. My main take on Justin Jefferson is, well, let's explain why he's falling, right? He's falling mostly because of the questionable quarterback play that we think is, or I'd say the market is kind of dinging him for a little bit. Plus, you know, with his injury last year that he fully recovered from and came back to his old self right away, um, I think there just isn't that memory of him being a straight up world beater because of that pocket of time that was removed, followed by the new quarterback situation. 
I think a lot of that really shouldn't affect how we think about him at all. Um, when he came back from injury, he was amazing. Um, his quarterback play, I don't think is going to take that big of a downgrade. Now, I think this, is, you know, I think Sam Darnold is going to start the season as their starting quarterback. And I do think Sam Darnold's probably going to hyper target his wide receiver one at a minimum. I don't think he's going to be completely awful. I think he's probably matured a little bit, learned a little bit. I don't think he's going to be good, but I just don't think he's going to be bad. Combine that with the fact that I don't think their defense is anything particularly special. I think the NFC North has gotten quite a bit better. The Bears offense, which was pretty anemic the last several years, and I, I would know I'm a massive Bears homer. Yeah, uh, that, those are those are my rider dies right there, and I, I've suffered for for the last couple of years. But they should be really improved and have arguably the best wide receiver room in the NFL. Uh, you you take that with Detroit already probably a top seven eight offense, pretty unquestionably going to put up a lot of points. And Green Bay was already a great offense last year, has the chance to be prolific this year with the sheer number. They have probably five very very good targets, and in totality. Uh, that's that's going to be pretty dangerous. So you combine all that. I think, you know, Justin Jefferson might have six or seven targets going in the fourth quarter and they're going to be losing by multiple touchdowns. Uh, you know, if anything, ho hopefully they keep the game close enough that uh, the fourth quarter is pretty interesting for Justin Jefferson. So slightly poor defense, uh, a lot facing a lot of good offenses with a quarterback that I think will probably hyper target is wide receiver one, regardless of the situation. And we might have TJ Hawkinson starting the season a little bit slow. We don't know. I don't think there's going to be a suspension for Addison, but if there is, you know, and there certainly could be, uh, you know, I'm not counting that out by any means. He very well could get, you know, two games or something along those lines. I haven't followed that super closely, um, but you've got, you've got their wide receiver too, plus their tight end that might miss, you know, around two to four games and at a minimum have some sort of a slow start. These are all things that I think overwhelmingly actually make up for the potentially not so great quarterback play. I think he's pretty elite. Um, and now that he's going, you know, at, at the 105, 106, uh, I think he's a smash grab there. My fade number one in round one. And let me get this clear. This is just, these are players in round one, not really fading anybody. They're all amazing players. I like them all. It's more about players that I'm not going to be reaching for by any means. And even right at their ADP, there's a good chance I like one or two players above them anyway. So I'm just going to have a very low uh, ownership unless they fall tremendously. My first player, it's unfortunate because I really like this player, but we'll get into that. And that's going to be AJ Brown. I don't really love AJ Brown at the 109. And I'm not really, I don't really have a ton of A.J. Brown this year. My my big qualms against A.J. Brown are, well, I do think he's going to have some amazing spike weeks where he puts up 30 plus points, uh, you know, and really does work for you. When I look at the makeup of the offense, I still see that Jalen Hurts is a good but not great passer of the football. I've just been, you know, watching last year, I was just a little unimpressed from time to time. And I think their offense had pockets where it stagnated a little bit. Uh, I just wasn't where I wanted it to be. I'm a much bigger fan of if I could take AJ Brown at the one Oh nine or later on, maybe we'll talk about him. Devonta Smith at the three one. I'm just going to go with the cheaper player that I can get, you know, a round and a half later that I think can still finish last year. I thought Devonta Smith was actually going to, uh, you know, outscore AJ Brown. When you look at the last four or five games of the season, AJ Brown really did not finish strong. The offense stagnated. He disappeared in a couple of games. I don't, I can't draft a wide receiver in round one that has the potential to disappear in certain games. You combine that with Philly has an amazing defense. There are some games where their defense is just going to put the game so far away where AJ Brown is not needed in the fourth quarter. And we'll see what happens in the third. Don't love that situation from a consistency standpoint. Uh, and the addition of Saquon Barkley, I think it makes the overall offense a lot better, which does help A.J. Brown. But now we're getting into a situation where Saquon can also break off long runs and end drives. He can catch the ball. And so when they're 20, 30 yards out, Saquon can take that in in a variety of ways. I think that lowers the overall touchdown ceiling for A.J. Brown. And he has an amazingly talented wide receiver too, and probably the third target earner uh, I'd project is Saquon Barkley. So for all those reasons, I love him. I would love him in round two though. 
You know, would I take him, you know, at the 2-2 two, two to like 2-5 range? I would love him there. I would love him over Olave, you know, and, and Taylor, right? At like the 2-2-2-3. Two, 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 I just don't love him at the 109. So moving on to my second fade in round one, and this is one of my favorite players in the entire NFL. I just don't love him in round one. And I know he goes at the 112, and that's going to be Jameer Gibbs. So I know he's really at the one, two turn, but if I have to make a call on someone I'm fading, what I'm really saying is I'm not going to be reaching for Jameer Gibbs. I'm not taking him at the one Oh nine. I'm not taking him at the one ten. I, I, I might, I, I would do take him sometimes at the one, at the one, two turn, but I'm not taking him a second earlier. I should say, I think he's, he's going, he's maxed out where he can rise in my rankings. And so because of that, he's a low ownership for me. Um, he's also kind of a, a fade for me because I don't think you should reach for him because I've also seen him fall, you know, not necessarily past the mid second, but I've definitely seen him fall to the two, two to two, four range every so, you know, every now and again. So when I'm at the one eleven, I'm definitely not going to take him because I think there's a very reasonable chance he comes back in round two. But if I have to pick somebody, uh, unfortunately it's going to be Gibbs and that's while loving a hero RB strat to begin with. Um, but I think Gibbs has a lot of room. He can still be kind of Christian McCaffrey light. Um, but I don't think he really has the range of outcomes. That's going to tackle a Bijan or a breeze without injury to David Montgomery. And if you take Gibbs, you're also keep in mind, you're taking David Montgomery off the table as a later pick. And I think Montgomery is a pretty good value pick when, you just need a stabilizing force at running back in these drafts. He's not necessarily a league winner, but I think he's a pure value pick where he goes. Taking Jameer removes a good pick that I enjoy later on. And so for that reason, in addition, I'm going to slightly be fading Jameer Gibbs in round one. Let's move on to round two. So this might be, I don't want to say controversial, but I do think uh, so I'm a big fan of the fantasy footballers. Big shout out to Andy, Mike, and Jason over there. They were a uh, uh, big influence in my uh, upbringing in the competitive space, going from uh, I like fantasy football to let's win some tournaments, let's win a lot of leagues, uh, let's do this a bit more seriously. And I know uh, Jason uh, Jason Moore, he is pretty off on this player, and that's Devontae Adams. I am not quite off of him yet, though. So I might have to go toe to toe with him later on. That would be very enjoyable. He goes to the two seven in round two. And here's my general take on why I really like him in round two. So I don't think Vegas has an overwhelmingly impressive defense. I don't think they're bad, but I don't think they're necessarily going to shut teams out in a particular way. Devontae is not needed through the entire game. Right? I, I like Jacoby Myers. I like him quite a bit, but Devontae is still an elite alpha wide receiver one on that team his college quarterback well actually that's uh it's not quite happening anymore unfortunately i was gonna say i've been watching so much receiver that uh i'm like wait is Derek carr still throwing the ball completely forget that i said that hopefully we can edit that out but what i mean to say is his quarterback play is mediocre but i still think he's going to be hyper targeted now uh, i don't think Minshew. it's probably going to be aiden o'connell from what i'm seeing but down the stretch, Aiden O'Connell didn't play horrible. Uh, I think he went a little bit underrated just because he wasn't, uh, you know, a big draft talent or anything along those lines. You know, he still showed a lot of rookie mistakes, but he still seemed very serviceable in a way where, you know, if, if nothing else, Justin Fields had this problem where he wasn't a great quarterback, but he's still hyper-targeted as wide receiver one. I think that's probably going to be the case with Devontae Adams. I don't see any reason he wouldn't have below a 25% target share. So when you combine a lot of these reasons, I think Devontae Adams still has probably one of the best uh, releases from the wide receiver in the entire NFL. He just he has an amazing way of just not getting jammed up at the line. So the amount of as long as he's getting catchable targets thrown his way, he's such a crisp route runner and has, you know, without quarterback chemistry, I think there's going to be some limited things that, you know, he could do with Rodgers that he won't be able to do here. But I still don't see a world in where he's not really getting it at 10 targets a game, maybe a lower touchdown ceiling because the offense might not be amazing. Um, I don't love their ambiguous running back room. I'm sure they're going to run the ball a decent amount, but I'm not sure how effective it's going to be. You know, Zemir White's OK. I don't think he's fantastic. Not really a pass catcher by any means. We'll see what uh, uh, what Dylan does in the backfield or Alexander Madison. 
I still don't see the running backs doing as much. So I think the target share is going to be a little heavier to the wide receiver. And uh, maybe there's just a little bit of with all the exciting rookies that are coming up right now. I think the older veteran wide receivers are just less popular. The rookies are getting better faster. And Devante seems to be a little bit slept on. Um, so even in the worst case outcome for him, I, I still think high target share. Um, so anyways, I, I like Devonte Adams. You know, I, I'm not going to take Jalen Waddle, a wide receiver two, over an alpha wide receiver in Devonte Adams. I like Debo. I like Debo a lot, but there's a lot of mouths to feed there. And just like at running back, we like high opportunity. I want high opportunity for my wide receivers. And so I think Devonte Adams catches more passes than Nico Collins, Debo Samuel, probably Olave. Um, I just, I really see that. So like in Devonte Adams. Uh, for my second favorite, we're going to go all the way to the end of round two. It's a player I can't stop drafting. It's risky. It's probably either going to win me a lot of money this year or cost me a ton of money this year because I can't stop taking him. But I think he's the definition of a true league winner when he hits. And for the tournament best ball uh, lineups, I think he makes a lot of sense for someone that if he hits in a particular way, you're going to have such an advantage because when he hits, it's not going to be a little bit. It's going to be pretty hard. That's going to be Devon HN uh, going at the 212. Uh, I have been getting him a lot whenever I'm in the, the 101 or the 102. You know, obviously a great place to be already. Um, I'm going for it, right? If I can get the Christian McCaffrey Devon HN start and go hyper fragile at, and probably only draft four running backs, uh, I'm, I'm loving it. If I can start CD Lamb and then grab HN, I'm extremely happy. So what I like about HN is his good games are legitimate 30, 40 point games. I mean, it's just insane what he can do. And I don't even think he caught a tremendous amount of passes last year. I still think he has a lot more work he can do in the passing game. Um, and I, I think much like Gibbs last year, I don't think HN needs, you know, I don't think he needs a, a 60 plus percent snap share in order to be supremely effective. We saw Tony Pollard be, uh, I forget exactly where he finished. He was easily a top 10 running back. If not, maybe the RB six, maybe RB five. I'd have to look that up. But Tony Pollard, when he had his, his big sort of breakout season, he was still playing in an RB two role, uh, but absolutely crushed it. And I think HN is an extremely better, uh, version of that. So I like him a lot. I probably like him less in cash or 12 team formats more in the larger uh, field formats where you just don't care about any of the bust cases. You're only looking for Supreme elite tournament winning upside. And I see him as that type of player. So Miami's offense is going to have to be pretty good. I mean, the Patriots are terrible, but the rest of the division should be pretty good. Um, their offense put up 70 points. I think they have the opportunity to be elite. I think to a, should take a step forward rather than back just a little bit more experience. I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, you know, everything stays. The offensive pieces are all pretty much the same. The coach is still there. The group is together. Uh, and, and so I think that, that, uh, that continuity is going to be quite good for his, his range of outcomes. My fade number one moving on over is going to be Nico Collins. I'm just not a Nico Collins guy. I can't get over the fact that I, I kind of sort of bought in on his upside case um, early in his career. And then it just didn't happen. I didn't think he looked particularly impressive on the field. And then he has this massive breakout, you know, uh, last year in Houston. But for me, it seemed a lot of it was CJ Stroud is an amazing quarterback. I think he would have gotten the ball. You see a lot of these like wide receiver two threes that are getting hyped up, you know, uh, Khalil Shakir. Uh, you know, Shahid, things of that nature. I think if they were in his spot, they would be just as good as Nico Collins. I think it was more CJ Stroud, a little bit less Nico Collins. Now he was good before and after the Tank Dell injury, so I'm I'm not going to say oh it, it was just all you know because Tank wasn't wasn't there and he inherited all these targets. No, I'll, I'll give him a little bit of a nod in saying that he was still okay before and after. Yeah, but the fact is Tank Dell was, you know, better than him uh, when he was on the field. And I think that's Im that's important to note that he was getting um, he was just getting the ball more. He was scoring more fantasy points when he was on the field. Um, and then you have the addition of Stefan Diggs, who I do think comes in and still commands 
Von Diggs, he's he's a he's a squeaky wheel, right? He's going to get the targets. And so I think you could potentially have a bit of a flat target share between Nico Tank and Stefan Diggs, it's similar to how like the Packers functioned last year, where you were reasonably happy because everyone was drafted pretty cheaply. That's why you were happy. But if you had taken them at high draft capital, all of the Packers wide receivers would have underperformed to high draft capital because of how distributed the targets were. I think that happens to Nico. And I think he's kind of a suicidal pick at the two five. I, 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 I'll be fine being the lowest in the industry on Nico Collins. It's a hill. Uh, I'm fine being on just I, there's so many other players in, you know, they're the wide receiver one in a pretty good situation, 25% plus target share. And I don't think Nico gets there um, um, personally. Even the running back room is considerably upgraded. So the amount of just the overall percentage he has of the offense, I think goes down tremendously. My second fade, I've never really been on this player, to be honest. Uh, I think he's talented. Uh, I, I think he's whiny and that's not going to do him any favors. He's doing that when he hasn't really done anything completely impressive to warrant in this guy, Brandon Ayuk. Um, I get it. Go get your money, do your thing. But, uh, that, that team will be very, very good with or without you. So if you gotta be paid, do it. But I'm, I'm not loving Ayuk in the second round. I don't see how he has 30 point plus games while everyone's healthy. I think it requires an injury to Kittle or an injury to Debo, which I get that happens pretty reasonably, you know, McCaffrey, Debo, Kittle. I mean, you're talking about a, a pretty fragile group that has been consistently injured. You know, one could say that's because they play hard. Maybe Ayuk's the one that gets injured. Who knows? But I do think it requires some extenuating circumstances for him to really pay off his ADP at 210. Uh, and I don't know what's going to happen. It looks like he's not going to get traded. But I'm um, almost assuredly, I think he's in the best situation in San Fran. And if he moves anywhere, if that happens, uh, I, I think it puts him in a worse situation in the majority of cases. Or at least, even if a situation is better, I don't think it goes from like good to league winning. I just don't see league winning upside him at the 210. I like other players better. I'd take Tavon Achan over him. Um, Obviously, he's going later, so of course I would take the wide receivers that go before him. But even just comparing apples to apples, I think I would straight up prefer Devonta Smith to Brandon Ayuk, and I think uh, I think DK Metcalf probably has a lower floor than Ayuk, but I definitely think DK Metcalf has a higher ceiling than Ayuk. And so for those reasons, Ayuk is just a little bit of a fade for me. And uh, let's wrap this thing up, shall we? Uh, let's move on to round three. So. My first favorite player in round three, I think I just mentioned, uh, that's going to be Devonta Smith. We already mentioned that I like Philly. You know, I like their offense. I like what they're doing. They've had some some downsides here and there. Uh, but the whole idea is they're a hyper-condensed offense, you know, between A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith. I really like in these offenses, kind of like a Miami's pretty similar, where it's, you know, wide receiver one and two, one A, one B. Um and the Rams, right, with uh, Nakua and Cup. You know, it used to be Cup and Nakua. Definitely going Nakua and Cup at this point. I really like targeting those offenses where the floor is extremely elevated, and then the ceiling case doesn't go away. It's not affected. It's still elite. And, you know, in case of an injury, you know, obviously through the moon, you, um, you honestly don't even want an injury because it allows the defense more of an easy double. Um, but I, I really like targeting these uh, these offenses with two main weapons at wide receiver. And I like the particular situation uh, with, with Devonta Smith. I like the way they use him where they can get him on these quick slants. I know it's better in PPR, in my opinion, with Devonta Smith. I, I always saw him as a person who can get open very quickly and go down. He's got some elements of Tyler Lockett to him, but much quicker where he's crafty. He's a pretty good route runner and he can just get open very quickly to give Hertz, you know, an easy, quick target, get those yards. I think he's going to have a lot of five to seven yard slants, and that's going to rack up over time. That's enough to give you the floor. And then he's still a burner with Saquon in the backfield, having the ability, needing to stack the box a little bit more, not being able to have all the, uh, all the support that the D backs are going to need. I, I think, um, I think corners are going to have a tough time and he's going to get open down the field a couple of times. And, uh, those are where you're going to get your big explosive weeks. He's still going to get you 10, 12 points, and then he can have that 20 plus if he catches the long touchdown. So I like him a lot. 
uh, really like him as a target in round three. Now he goes right at the top of round three, but I've seen him slip a little bit because, you know, Laporte is pretty popular at the top of the round. Um, Neighbors has, is, is kind of going up. I've seen him go a little bit early. So I think Smith's range of outcomes really is three, one to probably three, 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 four. So he's definitely going in that first part, but I do think he's a, he's in a range where he's still, he's still gettable if you're in the right spot. Uh, my second favorite, this is a scary one for me. I'll be honest. A lot of my other picks I'm, I'm feeling very confident in, in, in that even if I'm wrong, I'm not wrong by much, but when I'm right, I really profit. This one, if it goes wrong, I think, I mean, the team is, is it's going to be bad for the team, but I, I don't know. It's Derrick Henry. I think Derrick Henry and Baltimore, that could be pretty special, right? Baltimore already has a, a good O-line. They have a great team. They are going to be favored in a majority of their games. So they're going to run the ball a little bit more. Um, honestly, I think him going to a new team. I think a lot of teams have always wondered, Hey, why did I know Henry's not known for catching the pat, you know, catching a lot of passes, but I think he's really good in the screen game. I just think it throws a, another look at defenses. They're not, not necessarily expecting. I saw it a little bit out of him last year. I really liked what I saw. And I think he has the upside. He, I don't think he can't catch passes. I just don't think it's his main skill set. So I think Baltimore might be able to get some of that out of him. But the touchdown upside is really what we're going for here. Even if he runs for like 950 yards, it doesn't break a thousand. I still think he could have 15 or 16 touchdowns. I, I, I think he's going to easily. I mean, he could easily average a touchdown a game. I think most games, if you look at the Vegas line for like Derrick Henry to score one touchdown, I think the odds are probably going to favor him to score a touchdown. So I think he's the definition of what could be a league winner. He could absolutely finish as the, the running back one on the season. You're getting him in round three. Uh, his floor is still probably a top 12 running back. Uh, he's going off the board as well. Running back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, well, like, like RB nine. But, you know, so he's, he's going at the, the tail end uh, of an RB one, which I think is kind of being drafted at his floor outside of injury. So I think he's a combination of a value plus a league winner, good offense. We like drafting running backs on teams with good defenses. Baltimore has an elite defense. They're going to create a lot of turnovers, which is going to be good for Derrick Henry turnovers in the red zone, pretty much just give Henry a touchdown. Um, and uh, yeah, for all those reasons, Derrick Henry, I think he is an elite pick in redraft this year. I don't love him in dynasty, um, but I think he's also a, uh, Maybe not a leap, but I think he's a very, very high end pick uh, in uh, in best ball this year in round three. Let's get on. Uh, let's let's wrap this up with the fades. So my first fade got to be Sam Laporta at the top of the third, currently going at the three two. Now, this is not a knock on Laporta himself. I love Detroit. I love the offensive ecosystem. I really love what Laporta did from a skill standpoint. This was not luck. This was not all broken plays. He's a very, very good player. Um, my real challenge is I think he has a real soft case. If you look at this, his overall production, he wasn't producing like elite Travis Kelsey numbers or, you know, the high end Mark Andrews finish. It was kind of a soft year for a, for a tight end one soft ish. It was still good, but it wasn't elite. And at the top of the fifth round, two whole rounds later, you can get Trey McBride typically goes, you know, late mid to late fourth. And that, but sometimes he slips. She uh, he slips to the uh, the early fifth. And Kincaid definitely goes early to mid fifth. And I don't think that Laporta is significantly from a tier standpoint. I think Laporta, McBride, Kincaid are really all in the same tier. But Laporta is going at least a full round, if not two rounds earlier than those other targets. So for those reasons, I'm kind of out on Laporta this year. I would rather do an Allen Kincaid stack. I would rather do a Kyler Murray, Trey McBride stack. Um, I like Goff. It's not really about the stack. It's just how expensive he is at the three, two, when there's still league winning upside, uh, you know, DK Metcalf, very much league winner, Devonta Smith, maybe not league winner, but very, very good value. Maybe league winning. If AJ Brown goes down, Cooper cup is still in, in the third round. And if he can stay healthy, that could be fantastic. We already talked about Derrick Henry. Even going down the line, guys like Tank Dell, Diggs, Pittman, I think they're all better picks than Laporta, right? I would just take Laporta 
back to back with Trey McBride, essentially, maybe, you know, a couple picks higher, but I, I, I see him as a mid fourth, not an early third when I'm looking at ADP. So like Sam Laporta, hate his ADP. Gotta fade. Super hard fade. Probably my favorite fade on this list is Sam Laporta. Um, not loving it at all. Uh, and my last fade, this pains me. Again, a lot of this pains me because I like all these players. It's just for this format because I love this player in Dynasty. I think he's going to have a great season. I just don't see the league winning upside, and that's going to be Zay Flowers. right? Now, a lot of this has to do with that Derrick Henry take. I think the team is going to win through their defense often, which is going to limit Flowers' upside you know, on, on a per-game basis. Uh, I think Henry is going to take so many touchdowns away, lowering that touchdown uh, ceiling from Zay Flowers. You got Henry and a healthy Andrews and Lamar Jackson. There's just not going to be that many touchdowns for Zay Flowers. I think without the ability to consistently get open downfield and get some broken plays, I don't see how he's going to have this league winning upside out of nowhere. There's just too many other good weapons in their offense and a defense that's probably going to mean their offense can kick back and have a beer by the end of the game and just relax. So again, I like him in dynasty, but I see him as sort of a, a better safer floor, a guy that is going to mature. Well, he's always going to be in a good offense and be a good part of it. Bateman's doing a little bit better. Maybe the target share gets a little flat. He kind of needs Devontae Walker to not be really good too. Um, competition. I mean, for all the reasons above that I stated, Zay flowers. I like him. I think he's great in dynasty. I got to fade him in best ball, particularly at his ADP. Not sure why he's going this high. I, I do think he's just very mispriced here uh, from what I'm seeing. And, you know, maybe in your drafts, you're seeing him go uh, later than this. I've definitely seen him go later than this in many drafts. I'm on the clock in a couple of spots right now. I've, I think I'm on the clock in three places. If I pick up my phone, uh, I'm in the mid fourth and the late fifth. And I think I've seen him in the late fifth in a couple of drafts. So which is obviously you know two full rounds later. Um, which can start happening when you get into the fourth and fifth rounds a little bit. But um, anyways, at 312, definitely not. I'm not reaching for him at the turn. Uh, I'm only taking him when he falls. So that was it. Just a quick recap. Round one, uh, our favorites are uh, Bijan Brees, go with that hero RB build, and Justin Jefferson. Don't let him fall any farther than he has to. He's still Jay Jettas. And fading AJ Brown and Jameer Gibbs, really just not reaching for those two. Round two, we like Devontae Adams and Devon Achan, fading Nico Collins and Brandon Ayuk. And then in round three for best ball, we are liking Devonta Smith and Derrick Henry, and we are hard fading Sam Laporta and Zay Flowers. So this was part one. Uh, I'm going to come out with another video probably in a day or two. Uh, we're going to go all the way through an entire draft here. Uh, once we get through past like uh, the 10th round we'll probably do more rounds at a time uh so stay tuned check it out i'll put it in a playlist so if you want to wait a little bit and just watch them all uh that's cool too but uh yeah sorry i haven't put out as many videos lately as i would have liked to um just kind of been slacking a little bit trying to spend a little bit more time with the uh, the family doing some work things uh but i know uh redraft is going to start heating up here a lot of drafts happening a lot of best ball happening so we're going to try to turn up the content here a little bit get a few more videos out and, uh, uh, you know, may maybe get a video a day for, for a little while. We'll, uh, we'll have to see. So anyways, thanks for watching. Appreciate the support. Uh, if you like the way I think and view, uh, fantasy football in general, or if you just want to help uh, a new content creator, keep getting into the space, which I would very, very much appreciate. Please do, uh, consider, uh, liking the video, leaving a comment. And if nothing else, please take two seconds, hit that subscribe button. It means the world to me, allows me to keep doing this. Uh, tells me I'm doing a halfway decent job so we can keep learning and putting out more videos. Uh, Y'all have been awesome. Thanks for hanging out at the tavern. Grab yourself another drink and I'll catch you on the next one.